Hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, boy, what an occasion, huh? <laughs> thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming and, and uh, helping us uh, celebrate Mary Poppins' 50th birthday. I don't know how that can be. I'm only 50 myself. <laughs> but it's hard to explain what it was like to do that movie, what the feeling was. I loved it so, but there was something different about it right from the first day. There was a magic in the air. It, we felt like we were on board something that was knew where it was going. We were just kind of along for the ride. So much excitement. And I was always thrilled by the fact that the first day, my first scene, I got to sing the song, Winds from the East. There's mist coming in because something is brewing and about to begin. And I got a chill. I thought, boy, something is about to begin. And every day we went home saying, oh, we couldn't wait to get back the next day. It, it was like floating. It, the dancing was hard, but uh, it was nothing. It was a breeze. I, I can't remember. I could do it now, but it would hurt me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Walt would come down every day and, and see that smile on his face. And we, we knew that we were bringing it to life. And, and he enjoyed. He, everybody called him Uncle Walt. But we had a kind of a secret between us that we talked about. We knew that inside we were both nine years old. <laughs> and we promised never to grow up, and neither one of us ever did. But every time I hear the, the strains of a chim chimney, I'm back on that pavement with my chalk in my hand. Please enjoy. <laughs> It's really cool to be here today, and I want to thank the AFI very much for in inviting me and including me in this auspicious occasion of, uh, first of all, being in the incredible remodel of, of the Grauman's Theatre, or TLC as we call it. Um, I, I can't believe that it's been 50 years since we made our film. I was going to run out and get Botox this week and try to kid you all, but I, I guess you can do the math. So. Um, but 50 hours ago, I was actually in this self-same cinema for the premiere of Saving Mr. Banks. And that was actually really eye-opening to me. I had no clue what went on behind the scenes because um, <clears throat> everybody was really polite and protected the children. Um, but what did strike me was, you know, I was eight when I made this movie, and uh, Walt Disney was eight and put out to work by his parents, but under very different circumstances. He had to deliver newspapers for his dad um, when he was eight years of age in the snow and rain and really had a horrible childhood. And I always wondered why Uncle Walt, as I was lucky enough to call him, was so special and wonderful to me and so, so kind. Um, he brought the whole of my family out here, my sisters and my mom, and housed us in a gorgeous mansion that I wish I still had. Um, <laughs> up in the Hollywood Hills with a, an indoor heated swimming pool. That was very different too, coming from London. And uh, you know, outside speakers playing the sounds of that new group, the Beach Boys. Um, it was magical. Uh, on the weekends, he gave us his private plane, of course, it was called Mickey Mouse, to, uh, should have been Dumbo actually, um, to fly off to his Santa Barbara ranch or to Palm Springs or whatever. And you know, incredible experiences. He didn't have to do any of that. And I just twigged it the other night, seeing Saving Mr. Banks, which you've got to see. It's an outstandingly fine film. Tom Hanks playing the icon Walt Disney, you know, from icon to icon. He, uh, he was so kind to me because he wanted that eight-year-old child, if she was going to work, to have a magical experience. And I know that when you see this film today, you will pick up on that magic. It was an amazing place to work. It wasn't work at all. It was terrific fun.